Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com, and this is a real world review of the Sony RX100 Mark VI. Now I'm about to take it out into Central Park in New York City to try my hand at some street photography. Now because I'm doing street photography, I'm gonna set this camera to aperture priority mode so that I can better just focus on getting my shot and composition and let the camera figure out the rest. So now let's head into the park. So the first thing that I saw when I walked into the park was a bunch of people hanging around where it says imagine on the ground along with flowers. I utilized the tilt screen to hold it straight down so I could get the photos of the imagine sign as well as the flowers that were on the ground. So the biggest change from this camera to its predecessor is the fact that it now has a 24 to 200 millimeter equivalent zoom lens, whereas the old one was 24 to 70 and it was an f1.8 to 2.8 all the way out at 70. The new one at 24 is a 2.8 and at 200 it's a 4.5. So the question is, where does it go past 2.8? Well, when it's at 24, it's at 2.8 and at 25, it goes to 3.2. 40 millimeters is where it goes to f4. Keep in mind, the old one went to 24 to 70 and was a 2.8 at 70, and this one at 40 is already an f4. So there's a trade off here. Meanwhile, I noticed a guy playing guitar on the park bench and that gave me a good opportunity to stretch the zoom out to 200 millimeters to see how those photos would look. When I was reviewing some of the images of the guy playing guitar, I noticed that even out at 200 millimeters, I wasn't really able to blur the background as much as I would like and that's because it's at 4.5. But if I was using the RX100 Mark V, I wouldn't have been able to get the same reach. This camera has a 20.1 one inch stacked CMOS sensor, which is the same sensor that you will find in the RX100 Mark V. Now it also utilizes some of the same technologies that you will find in the Sony A9, but of course this is a much smaller sensor. This camera has an anti-distortion electronic shutter because it is a stacked sensor, so it does a really fast readout. And because it's an electronic shutter, you have a max shutter speed of 1 32,000th of a second. The native ISO of this camera is 125 on the lowest side, all the way up to 12,800, which is basically the same as what you will find in the previous models, so you should expect similar results. After I was done photographing the guitar player, I noticed a dog sitting under a bench, and I figured, let's take a picture of a dog sitting under a bench, so I got a couple of shots. Something I noticed with this camera is that when I change the aperture with this ring, and I'm zoomed all the way out and it's at say 4.5, then I zoom back in, I gotta turn the ring again to get it back to 2.8. So when you have it at 2.8 and you zoom out, you can see the aperture's changing. But as soon as you touch this ring at all and you lock it in to 4.5, which is what you can do all the way out, when you come back, it's gonna be at 4.5, not 2.8. Further on into Central Park, I heard some jazz music and there was a jazz band just sitting there and playing with a bunch of people standing around. Now, I had a little bit of trouble with the EVF because it was super bright, which made it harder for me to get the composition the way that I wanted it. But you will notice that when you shoot at 24 millimeters, it's almost like you have infinite focus because everything is in focus. But when you zoom in to 200 millimeters, I kind of isolate the subject. And because it's such a deep background, it was able to blur a little more. Then I noticed a kid who was standing front and center because he was enjoying the music. Now because we're in a public space, I didn't have a problem doing the street photos of the kid. Now if somebody asks you what you're doing, if a parent comes up to you and says, hey, why are you taking photos of my kid? Be completely honest. In my case, I'm testing out this camera. Is it all right if I take a few photos or I'd like to send some to you if they turn out well. You just have to be careful in the situation 
situations you're in, but because I took those photos and had a longer zoom range to do so, nobody noticed what I was doing. One of the biggest issues I've had with the RX 100s in the past is how the EVF popped up. In the past, you had to press a button, then pull out the viewfinder to allow you to use it. Now you have one button that pops it up and pops it out. And then when you press it down, it pops itself in and pops itself down. So that feature is great, but it still is a 0.39 inch EVF with 2.36 million dots. I also found it a little more difficult in bright sunlight to see the EVF because it, I basically needed an eye cup to block the light to create a shade so I could see the EVF. So after using this RX100 Mark VI for roughly 15 minutes and using the EVF, my face hurts, my head hurts, because the, the EVF is so tiny that I have to squint and sit here and tighten up my face to try to figure out what I'm looking at because it's very difficult to see this EVF. I know I've used the RX100 Mark IV in the past and the EVF worked, it's just so darn small that it's hurting my head and it's hurting my face and I don't want to, use, I don't want to shoot like this. I don't want to use the LCD screen because that's just, that's just not as good for shooting for the way I like to shoot. Just like its predecessor, this camera shoots 24 frames a second. You can now hold your finger down for four seconds when shooting raw and not outrun the buffer. Now I did a quick test with this. I was shooting raw plus JPEG with a guy on the bike coming towards me, shot 96 shots in a row without an issue and there was no viewfinder blackout either. Nailed that. I think I, I, think I may have gotten something, I, I hope. There are 315 autofocus points in this camera, which is the same as what its predecessor has, but now it can acquire autofocus at 0.03 seconds, opposed to 0.05 seconds, because it's utilizing the A9's algorithms for autofocus. For example, it has doubled the tracking performance for the IAF, and in my test, the IAF in this camera works really well. Where I did get to test out continuous autofocus is when this kid decided to just run in front of me, it gave me a good opportunity opportunity to use the lock on AF and it worked really well and I know I got some really good keeper shots of the kid. You have a three inch 180 degree tilting touch screen. Now keep in mind that this has less resolution than its predecessor. This one is under a million dots of resolution. Now when I say touch screen I say that lightly because there's not much that you can do to touch. You can now touch to focus when you're shooting video. You can hit touch to shoot photos, but you can't go through the menu system to touch it. So basically it's a touch screen with not a lot of touch functionality. One of the things that is different from its predecessor is you can now tilt the screen down to 90 degrees, where you can't even do that on some of Sony's higher end cameras. And if you're somebody who's going to do some vlogging or some selfie taking, you can flip the screen all the way up like this and get some photos of yourself. This camera does not have a joystick, but it does have touchpad functionality for moving the autofocusing points, which means you can move your thumb around while your eye is up to the EVF, or if you're using just the LCD screen, you can move your thumb around to move the focusing points, and sometimes I think that's quicker than the joystick anyway. Let me jump in here real quick to thank the sponsor of this real world review, Squarespace, for helping make it possible. Now, if you'd like to build your own website, head on over to squarespace.com slash Frono's photo to get a 14 day free trial. And if you decide that it's for you, go ahead and use the code Frono's photo at checkout to get 10% off. Now let's get back to the video. As we moved further into the park, we came up to the Bethesda Fountain. There were some turtles in the water because I like turtles. And so I was like, hey, let's shoot some photos of these turtles because they're just floating up to the top. That gave me a chance to check out the 200 millimeter zoom 
and it actually looks really sharp on the turtle's eye who was coming out of the water. Now this also was a good place to test out the 24 millimeters on the wide side because there was a guy standing all the way across the shore. So I shot at 24, you can barely see him, and at 200, for some reason it looks like he's waving at me, though I think he's just doing some yoga stretches. To go along with the turtles, there were also some ducks as well as some people in boats, which on the back of the camera looked like they turned out pretty well. So how does this camera feel in your hands? Well, it is a pretty boxy camera. It's basically the same size and just a little bit heavier than its predecessor. One of my main concerns is dropping it. It's a box. There's not a lot of grippy stuff to hold on to, but you do have a lanyard that goes around the wrist. But unlike the Nintendo Wii, there is no way to tighten it on your wrist so you can just let it dangle there because I noticed sometimes the thingy thing would fall off my hand and if I let go of the camera, boom, it would go crashing to the ground. And that did happen to one of the reviewers. Now, one of the things you may have noticed if you've used the predecessors is that if you're gonna go ahead and use the zoom in toggle dial, there's more grippy McGripperson on it. One of my favorite photos of this entire real world review happened when the El Dorado towers were in the background of an image where you have the water and a bunch of rowboats. Now I was able to get an awesome composition shooting vertically using the electronic viewfinder because I was in the shade and the file looks incredible when I go black and white. You would never have known that this was taken with a point and shoot camera. Because I get asked all the time, what camera are we using to film this real world review? Well, we are using the Sony A9 with the battery grip as well as the 24 to 70 2.8 G Master lens. Now let's talk about some video features. This camera shoots 4K video at up to 30 frames a second at 100 megabits. Now keep in mind, you will only get five minutes of record time, but there is no pixel binning in this. It's giving you a full pixel readout, which in turn is making this one of the best smaller cameras for shooting 4K video. Something new in this camera is that it gives you the ability to shoot in HLG, which is basically HDR video. It also has the ability to shoot in S-Log3, but keep in mind, it's gonna take much longer to color grade that to get a final product. Just like the RX100 Mark V, you can shoot at 960 frames per second, which is 40X slow motion. But in my opinion, I wouldn't go past 240 frames per second because at 960, it's taking a smaller readout and then blowing it up, which means the quality isn't going to be as good. Here's a video feature that was taken out of this camera that some of you may miss if you had the older models. There is no longer a built-in ND filter. So if you're in a bright situation, that means you won't be able to shoot at 2.8 with one of those normal shutter speeds for capturing video. Now, if you think this is the perfect vlogging camera, well, it's not because it still has not added a mic jack. I get it, it's a smaller camera, Maybe there would be no place to put the microphone, but I would think that if Sony wanted to make this the best-selling vlogging camera on the market, they would find a way to make that work. I did test this out as a vlogging camera in two different scenarios, one indoors and one outdoors, and I'll let you guys determine if it's good or not. Look at me, I'm making a vlog with this camera. So, so you know, I've got steady shot on, I've got face detect on, I also have auto levels on, and I'm hand holding it just by literally hand holding it. So this is what it sounds like, this is what it looks like under just regular lights in the factory. But now let's take it outside to see how it does. So here we are outside vlogging with this camera. I've got built-in image stabilization on. I got face detect. You're hearing the microphones that are built into this camera and you can probably hear everything going around me from the birds to the cars to lawn mowers. Uh, but I'd rather have a built-in or uh, have the ability to put in my own microphone because that's gonna be much better. Also, what I don't have is an ND filter built into this camera, so we can't cut back on the amount of light going on that's coming in, which means the aperture has to go way up, the shutter speed goes up, and we just don't get that cool depth of field that you can get when you can cut down with the ND filter and use a 2.8. Further into the park, there was a guy who broke out a massive Canon, either 600 or 800 millimeter lens, who was shooting some birds in the tree. So I asked him if he'd be okay if I took a couple of pictures of him taking pictures of the birds, and that's exactly what I did. 
After photographing the guy with the big Canon lens, I noticed a kid eating ice cream. Now because I have a 200 millimeter zoom range, I was able to stay further back and just focus on getting this kid in the shot. Then I saw the kid who was eating his ice cream start walking away to meet up with the rest of his family where they were doing family portraits because the mother had a camera and they were all focused on looking at her, which gave me a good opportunity to get some other vertical shots and horizontal shots, both wide and tight. And then I transitioned over to shooting one of the toy boats at 24 millimeters and at also 200 millimeters so you can get a feel for its range. You will find one SD card slot that is UHS-1. I personally would love to see dual slots, but I understand in such a small camera, it doesn't make it easy. Though it would be interesting if they had a micro SD and an SD. But one of the issues you will find is if you are shooting those 24 frames a second, it's gonna take a long time to write those images to the card to clear out the buffer. If you're used to the menus in the Sony Alpha cameras, you'll be happy to know that that has been passed down to this RX100 Mark VI, which means you now have the My Menu feature, so you can put items that you use often in that section. Look both ways, look both ways. As we were leaving the park, we came upon a guy who was reading a book on a bench. He had the book open, he was looking down at it, he had a cane, and I thought that this would make a good opportunity to test out the 200 millimeter zoom again, as well as shooting at 24 and in between, because I think that these are gonna be good black and white photojournalistic street photos. This camera uses the same battery as in the Mark V. Now in my test, it felt like I only got a little over an hour of usage out of the camera. It's gonna depend on how much video you're shooting and how many frames per second you're shooting. But keep in mind, if you're gonna be traveling or honestly anywhere shooting with this camera and you wanna keep shooting, maybe have three batteries or more. Here we are back at the loft and it's time to take a closer look at the files. But before I do that, I wanna let you know that you can download sample raw files over on the website. The link is up on the screen right now. You can download them, pixel peep, and see if you like the quality that you're getting. Now we are about to look at the raw files. Now for the longest time after shooting this camera, I wasn't able to open the raw files in Lightroom and I actually edited the JPEGs and I have to say that the JPEGs looked pretty good straight out of the camera after I went ahead and made some tweaks, which means it wasn't straight out of the camera, but they look good out of the camera. And then I was able to tweak them, even pull back on some of the highlights. But now that I have the raw files, let's take a look at some of the images. So here's one, we've got Imagine. Now normally I wouldn't be able to get an image like this without a tilting screen that allows me to just hold it out like this and shoot straight down. I'm really happy with the results that I got with this. The color looks really nice on these flowers, the focus, Mm, can't tell you whether it's, it, it doesn't look super tack sharp, but it actually doesn't look that bad right here through the imagine part. So that may be me being a little critical of the file, but honestly, it looks pretty good right off the rip. Then I just zoomed in a little bit, tried to get my composition a little different. But again, having the ability to have the screen tilt to 90 degrees, whereas the old camera didn't do that, makes this a better option for getting images just like this. Now moving on to zooming in on a subject. I was sitting on one of the park benches and this guy who barely spoke English was singing music in English, I'm at 1 80th of a second, so let's take a look at it. Yeah, is my critical focus on? It's pretty darn close, it's not perfect. I think one of the main issues here is that I was at 1 80th of a second at 400 ISO. I tend to like to bump my ISO up higher to give me a faster shutter speed to compensate for any movement that there may be on my part or on the subjects. Because as we look here, you can see the strings are moving and his hand is moving because I'm at 1 80th of a second, but it's okay, this, this photo's all right. In terms of bokeh, there's nothing really in the background that's gonna to be too distracting, so there are out of focus areas, but it looks, it's all right. It's a, it, it's a basic snapshot 
maybe a little better than a basic snapshot. Now moving on, I wanted to show you a black and white. We, we went through the park, as you saw earlier, and the jazz band was playing, and this, you can now see I'm at 1 800th of a second at F4, ISO 1600, and you may be like, oh, the noise at 1600, honestly? I really love how this file came together. Look how sharp the grain looks. It, it looks really good. I'm always a proponent of natural looking noise in an image, grain. I don't need to get rid of it. Even at 1600, this shot is so much sharper than some of the other ones that I got and my focus is much better. But I wanted to see what this looked like in color as well. And I have to say that the color rendition that I'm able to pull out of the raw files off of this sensor look really good. The greens look nice in the background, the, the bronze of the saxophone and his skin tones look very nice to me. But again, you can download these raw files to check out for yourself. Moving on, just giving you a little wider shot showing what you can get at 24, I believe this was around 24 millimeters. I'm not even sure what the nine millimeters means because that's the equivalent. You'd have to multiply it by, I don't even know the number, but I'm happy with the colors. I'm happy with what's going on in here. You can see that you're getting some grain, but again, I'm zoomed in one-to-one. -one. That is not a big deal at all. Moving on, we've got the kid running through the park, 1 800th of a second at ISO 250 because it was super duper sunny. This is a super difficult image to get because we got the light coming in from the back, but you can see I'm still able to bring the eye back in. I didn't want to go too far to make it look too fake, but I'm happy with how this one looks. Again. Focus, just a smidgen out. Now for the everyday person shooting, they'd never know the difference. For me being super critical, it looks just slightly out, uh, but again, still looks good. Now let's show you what the widest looks like. Yeah, so nine millimeters is basically the equivalent of 24 millimeters in a 35 millimeter equivalent. Look at this, ultra wide, you got the clouds, brought the highlights all the way back, and then we zoom in out to 200 millimeters. That's a pretty big range. And I don't know why this guy is staring at me. He's like, why are you looking at me? I don't even know if he knows that it's me shooting because I'm literally all the way across the way like this but maybe he's trying to make eye contact with me being like, why are you looking at me, young man with weird hair? Or, or he's just thinking about the water. Now this is my favorite shot from the entire thing. Uh, you've got, I believe they're the Diablo Towers in the background. You've got the guys in the boat on the bottom. We were walking through the park and walked past a tree. I looked to the left and I was like, Damn, this is a shot. Went vertical, used my finger on the touch screen to move the focusing points much quicker than using the joystick or the other way that you need to do it. And I nailed it right here on these guys in the boat who also seem to look like they're photographers lining up a shot. I didn't realize that, but the, the tones, the colors, the sharpness, and when I say colors, I mean contrast. And I was able to bring the sky back down with the highlights and it looks really good. You wouldn't know that this was shot with a point and shoot camera if, somebody was looking at it because again a good shot is a good shot is a good shot no matter what you take it with moving on kid in the park just showing you that you can get some candid moments uh, i was zoomed out pretty far so i was at a distance just happy with the way that the the black and whites are coming up when i'm editing them uh, this one went back and forth do i like the color do i like the black and white um in this case, I kind of like the black and white, but I'm just showing you this is what it looks like in color. When we go ahead and zoom in, it's really sharp. This one nailed the focus from a distance. So happy with the results that I got there. I just like that one. This one, though, when you zoom in, it's like I, I missed it slightly. This one looks to be out now that I zoom in all the way and it's not my shutter speed. It could be my movement or the focus may have missed. In this case, I don't even know if it's focused anywhere. Maybe down here on his shoe may be more focused than in, than, than in on his face. So we got two more to talk about and then we'll get into the final part of this video. Just sitting on a bench photographing the guy, see what he's reading. He's reading Ghost Soldiers, which I've, I've never read, but it allows you to do this. When you're sitting in the park, you can snipe pictures like this, the candid moments, because now you have the zoom range that you didn't have before on the Mark V. So with the Mark VI, bigger zoom, you're gonna have a trade-off of having the higher aperture at the time, but the big question is, 
who is this camera for? Now, Sony likes to say that it's for the professional photographer who still wants to have manual control of the camera, but they don't want to take something bigger. Now, I get that. This camera is nice to take around because you can shoot full manual. Now, one of the more difficult things is looking through the viewfinder, and also it's a super dainty camera, so if you do drop this one, it's most likely going to break and not work. Now, on the flip side, it's a super expensive, point and shoot travel camera for the everyday person that just wants one camera that's going to get nice results. But honestly, the everyday person taking this camera out is probably not going to shoot this in full manual. They're going to put it on full auto, shoot JPEG, and just be happy with the results that they're getting. Because this camera in full auto is going to do a very nice job, uh, and I don't really think that they're going to ever shoot RAW or have a need for it, though I'm always going to shoot RAW in this camera because that's how I personally shoot. I like having the RAW files, but if you like to move quicker, then by all means, shoot the JPEG with a point and shoot like this. But if you find that you're put off about having a 200 millimeter zoom versus the 70 and not being at 2.8, but instead being at 4.5, I gotta tell you guys, this is a point and shoot camera. There's trade-offs. If you wanted to get the best of the best with Honor, sir, you're gonna take your larger camera, your DSLR or your A7 III or whichever camera that you have. So you can't complain about quality to the nth degree because this is a trade-off. It's a super small camera, it's super compact with a big zoom and lots of power. Another question that people have is, should they just use the smartphone that's in their pocket versus spending the 1200 bucks? Now I used the iPhone 10 to take a portrait with Dan outside and it looked pretty good with the fake bokeh. It also looked pretty good using the Sony, though I do think it may look a little better on the iPhone. But then again, for the type of shooting that I was doing in the park, there is no way in hell I would be able to get the results that I got from a cell phone compared to what I was able to get with this Mark VI. You just can't do it with the super small sensor and barely having a zoom. So at the end of the day, I don't think a lot of people are gonna be purchasing this camera. If you do decide that it's for you, I think it's a good choice. I think you have a nice chance of getting great shots with it, whether you shoot in manual or full auto. Just again, it is super dainty. If you do drop it, it's probably gonna be break and you're out quite a bit of money. So that's where I'm gonna leave it, guys. Don't forget, if you do like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. You like real world reviews and you want more of them, thumbs up, leave some comments down below. Be sure to share it. And don't forget, you can download the raw files over on the website. To check out some more real world reviews, go ahead and click on the screen over here. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. How does this camera feel because it's so tiny? Well, I would know because I'm used to holding tiny things in my hands. I knew you were gonna do it. <laughs> Definitely use an app. Nailed it, yeah, use that as an outtake. Seriously, throw that in at the end as like a boop. All right. <laughs> I don't give a sh